Office 183S, lecture number nine. The fail out lecture. It pains me when people fail or go bankrupt or get a nine on their credit report or just drop out. Uh, happens. Sell one thing. Sell, and this is this is why startups die. Also, they they die because they don't sell. So this lecture is the fail out lecture, which hopefully you won't fail out because I will actually volunteer to help you team sell something. 70% have that half 70 plus percent people dropped out of CS183S. If you look at this blog post I wrote called 63,030 students taking CS183B, 20 will set the curve, the bell curve. This is just what the numbers entail. People don't sell, people don't promote. And that's why on if you want to do bit well on the entrepreneurship bell curve, it's doing things that don't scale but have momentum. It's selling and promoting. It's getting distribution. So I'm curious as to what the dropout percentage is going to be for this. Being a class in 2012, right now it's 2016, Startups don't die from bad product. They die from poor distribution. Peter Thiel said that in CS183 in 2012. This is absolutely the bane of existence or inside the entrepreneurship ecosystem, which is that startups die when they don't have to die. Death, 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 death. Uh, there's a bunch of articles on it and they're genius and the initial one which I quoted I think in lecture four which is startup death spiral uh, that's Steve Blank's series this is Paul Graham series which is www.paulgram.com slash these URLs slash not not as in not not slash a or d a o r d which is uh default alive or default dead slash die slash startup mistake. So paulgram.com has a series of articles on startup death and how to avoid it. Fear, uh, how to get your first 10 customers. It's a lot of sales promotion and sales work, which an undergrad uh, lightheartedly and insightfully wrote Dan Chipper and it's WW or bit.ly bit.ly slash dshipper for Dan Shipper, first initial last name dshipper712. So he wrote an article on how to get your first 10 customers, and I recommend that you study it. Looking for the one cheat or the silver bullet's not going to work, which is why when I further read Dan Shipper's article, which is bit.ly bit.ly slash dshipper711, he wrote about knifing the silver bullet. Knifing is in cutting, knifing the silver bullet, where where self-funding and sales go hand in hand. bit.ly, grab a pen, bit.ly slash dshipper711. Three steps to selling. You should contact and cold call a merchant where you can should ask them, hey, do you have a Google Places uh, account. Do you have a Google Places listing? It's the equivalent of a Yellow Pages listing. Cost is free. Google doesn't promote it. Uh, close them on bartering a hamburger for that Google Places. This will pop your sales tree. This will get you your first sale. Close them on a cheeseburger. Or if they don't sell cheeseburgers there, and close them for a granola <laughs> or a yogurt. So you're listing them on Google Places where they don't know how to enter custom information into Google Places. And it tells a small sequence of steps which you can Google and then regurgitate to a merchant. Baby steps. First possible sale is selling a website. A lot of merchants, a lot of restaurants, even in Palo Alto, over 50% of restaurants don't have a website. Sell them a website. Don't do it for one cheeseburger, do it for 20 cheeseburgers. Do it for a, some small barter amount where you can help the merchant email publish posts because a lot of merchants don't realize that they can use their dumb phone iPhone 4 
or iPhone 6 Plus or 6S Plus to email publish post to WordPress. Let me repeat that. Merchants don't know that they can email publish post to WordPress and therefore uh, build a website and keep it updated with like new menu items that they can just email publish post. Your first sale under your belt is so important that I'm willing to team sell it for you. Now I realize that I don't really scale, but I sort of do. And what I mean by that is I will help you team sell to get you your first sale. And granted, it won't be 100% your sale, the first sale, and you keep all the money. But at least in that way, you'll have a half a sale under your belt. It's kind of like in football where they track statistics for sacks. Sometimes you don't get your first sack on your own. Sometimes your first sack is a half sack, which sounds funny but it's a half a sack. And there's actually a funny hashtag about it called party in the backfield. Party in the back is in backyard, field is in football field. Party in the backfield. 